How'd you do? A lot of students find this a little challenging, and that's okay, but you need to do lots of practice and stay on it. Okay, so I'm gonna go through it quickly, assuming you did some work on it. So it's really only one more stereo center than one before. So head. By the way, what is CHO? CHO is C, double bonded to O. You'll see that abbreviation a lot. That's equals CHO. Okay, so that's the, that's what you interpret as higher priority because it has two bonds to O. So that's why I gave it the head as opposed to this carbon, which only has one bond to O, CH2OH. So I'm gonna call that CH2OH. It does not get its own line. That'd be wrong in a Fisher projection. Okay, so there's only two lines because there's two stereocenters. So that's, this is not a stereocenter. So there's no special line for it. So let's start drawing. Okay, so each of the stereoisomers, each of them, let's draw them all. Okay, so start with all the possibilities, but we're doing them in Fisher projection style now. We're not doing dashes and wedges. We're going straight to Fisher. All right, so we have two lines, horizontal lines, because we have two stereocenters, and then no line for the CH2OH, because that is not a stereocenter, but I'll just draw out CH2OH. Now on, we don't have to do this fancy maneuvering with figuring out what's left and right because we're doing all the possibilities. We're gonna do all the lefts and all the rights. So, because this was not defined with dashes and wedges. So let's do both rights right now, just to start off. Right, right. Okay, but that means we could also have the opposite. So let's draw, it's an antimer. In other words, left, left. All right, those are mirror images. Do that in green so you can see the inner plane. But we didn't have to have cis like the same side, right, right, or left, left. We could have had left, right, right, left, correct? So let's do that scenario. What do you think of that one? So we could have also had right, left, or the exact opposite of that one, which means it's that guy's an antimer. So it should be looking in the mirror, left and right. So that means that, what is the relationship? Let's label it. These with the mirror, plain label, those are enantiomers. And then all of the other relationships are diastereomers. Okay. All right, so you want to be comfortable going from a fissure to the straight chain, from a straight chain to the fissure, back and forth. You also want to be able to use the fissure like, like we were using the other straight chain, you know, the regular bond line format. Um, like, can you assign R and S? Yes, you can. Here's the generically, you know, the most common method for assigning R and S um, that most students find easiest. So if you wanted to find out which one's R and S, since there's no dashes and wedges already drawn in for you, and they're all dashes, all wedges, you just switch one of them so you notice there, like, so this would be from your Fisher projection, all the lines. You switch one of them to a dash, has to be one of the vertical ones, um, and then take one of the horizontal ones and switch that to a wedge, okay? Then you assign your usual priority. So let's just do this as an example. Okay, let's make it hard so that I'll, uh, so that you can have, the, have that plan ready in place for a hard scenario. So let's say our priority ended up being one, two, three, four. Uh-oh, that's why I said make it hard. Four is not on a dash for us. We have to rotate, okay? So you gotta do, what are we gonna rotate? Take the other planar one. You always take a planar one to rotate this like a little propeller. So the only planar one that we have left is the three bond. And so we need four to go to the back, so we rotate that way. 
it's like you're holding like it's like your kid with a pinwheel and you're just spinning but it's but it's going this way you're spinning it right so here's number three stay still that's where your hand is holding on to it you still have all these spots right but now two came to the front four went to the back one's over here and now you can assign it our POVs in place now you, after all that work you could finally assign it and we're going counterclockwise, S, we're good to go. Now you may have noticed a pattern by now when we're doing all these draw, all the possible stereoisomers for this compound. You may have noticed that so far we've done compounds with two stereoisomers. What if I had three? How many would I draw? Well, there'd be R, 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 S, 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 R, R, S, 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 R. SSR, no, S R S R, R, you know, do you have to always work it out? Actually, no, there's a formula. So a molecule with an N number of stereocenters can have a maximum, it's not a guarantee, because there's special cases will work out, but up to two to the N stereoisomers, right? So because we had seen two, two to the two is four. We had four possibles. So three it quickly goes up to eight, right? So we'll, I'll tell you about that exception where we don't get reach that maximum. We don't always get that eight or that four. So remember two. Let's do another example. This is tartaric acid, naturally occurring uh, carboxylic acid. So CO2H, remember, that's another one that comes up a lot in its condensed formula. That equals carboxylic acid. Okay. All right, so let's do this again. Draw them all out. Let's do the Fisher projection style. That's fine with me. Let's do Fisher because that's fast. We'll see the beauty of the Fisher, even though it was hard at first. Um, let's find the stereo centers first. How many stereo centers? Two, right? One, two. But now look at this one. There's no head. Because they're the same. They're both carboxylic acids. So it doesn't matter which one we put it there. So let's do CO2H, CO2H, and then we have that. Now, because we have two stereocenters, that means we have two to the two equals four max possible stereoisomers. Okay. All right, all right, let's do what we were doing. I want you to pause, fill them all in, okay? This is the same thing, but then see if you could distinguish what's going on when you draw them all out. So I'm gonna keep writing it out, and then uh, if I'm going too fast, you can pause it. So I'm gonna doing the two on the right, then the exact opposite, two on the left, And I'm gonna get the framework ready for the other two. And then I'm gonna do right, left, and left, right. Okay, there is a little omen in the directions here. What is unusual about one of these pairs? So I did this by doing the same old mirror image sort of thing where I did the exact opposite. But we always, what you have to actually watch out for, especially when you see something that doesn't always happen like we have two of the same, this symmetry, symmetry is happening again. There's no head, so they were matching. So what, means, what that means is that you could actually have, when you have symmetry like that, you can actually have what you think might be the mirror image, and it's not, it's the same thing. So make sure you really, when you draw the mirror image, you're drawing a new thing before you commit to it being a stereoisomer. So for example, this guy 
it looks in the mirror, it sees that. But if you twist it like a doorknob, you can superimpose it. You're not allowed to flip Fisher projections, by the way. You're not allowed to do this pancake flip. We're allowed to do that with all the other uh, perspectives with molecular models, but we're not allowed to do pancake. Why? Because a Fisher projection is defined as wedges for the bow ties, for the horizontal bonds. You flip it, they're not wedges anymore. You've destroyed that perspective. They're never allowed to be flipped. So never flip a Fisher out of plane. You could do in plane rotation, okay? So never flip Fisher out of plane. In plane rotation, so I'll say but in plane rotation is allowed. Why are we doing that? Because look what happens if you do an in-plane rotation here. Twist this like a doorknob in the plane. The head and the tail are the same. So you line up the head and the tail here to match. This is the same as that. They're not different. They're not enantiomers. So before you start labeling things as enantiomers, watch out. These are the same. They're not enantiomers. Let's do that to this guy because we got to watch out when the head and the tail are the same like that. Now these are actually different, so those are truly enantiomers. Prove that to yourself, okay? And these are truly diastereomers. So what happens is, how many stereoisomers did we really get? We drew, we knew there was four max possible, and that's why it's phrased that way. Four max possible, which implies that there might be less than four. Four is the max, but there might, you might not get four. You didn't get four. And you only got three. You can't count the same one twice. That is tricky. Don't worry, there's a word for that this scenario so that we can watch out for it. This is called the meso compound. They're tricky. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, they're very tricky. Why are they tricky? Because they have stereocenters, yet they're achiral because of a larger symmetric thing going on. Uh, carbon as a stereocenter. So you're like, oh yay, the symmetry is broken. It's going to be chiral. Uh, but no, the way the molecule has arranged itself has a greater level of symmetry that destroyed the chance for it to be asymmetric. So it's once again symmetric, <laughs> which means you are misled. You're misled by that chiral center. So they're not always chiral just because you have a chiral center. Most of the time they are. You see a tetrahedral carbon with four different groups, you almost always have a chiral compound. You definitely have a stereocenter. You most, but you don't. You're not guaranteed to have a chiral compound if it's meso. Meso means it's not chiral. So it's a tricky case. So let's define that. So you got to watch out for that. All right. Um, meso compounds have stereocenters, but are achiral. Take these seriously. This is like the biggest villain in the whole chapter. Very scary. <laughs> kind of fun when you get the hang of it, but uh, yeah, they can be the bane at first. So you gotta gotta get your you gotta get the upper hand on those guys. All right.
We need some more meso practice, not just with Fisher. I want to do some meso with dashes and wedges, okay? Let's do it with a ring system. It makes it easy to see um, because they're, or that's actually really the most common way we encounter them is in a ring system, very common. So it's worth labeling it. So I'm even giving you a heads up here, look. Let's find all the isomers of dimethylcyclohexane, label them as achiral or, or as chiral or meso. This is actually homework for you to do because, but I'm gonna give you a little warm up to get ready for it. So this is dimethylcyclohexane. It's a nice long exercise, all of the isomers. So start with one, one dimethylcyclohexane and work your way to one, two dimethyl, one, three dimethyl, one, four. And so those are the constitutional isomers and then convert those to the stereo, expand those to all the stereo isomers, okay? I want you to work on that to warm up for that one. I'm gonna give you a tip on how to identify which one's meso in that set. So notice this, this is not dimethylcyclohexane, this is a dimethylcyclopentane, so a similar idea. So this is a one, three scenario. One, two, three, one, two, three. This is a cis and this is a trans, right? One of these is meso, which means it's achiral. Meso compounds are achiral, right? One of them is not. How can we spot it? We'll just draw the mirror image, right? Let's draw the mirror image. So let's take this one. Draw its mirror image. Hey, it's the same. It's exactly the same. What's going on here? So I could pick this up and put it over here and it matches perfectly, right? So how would I know that it was meso? It goes back to the plane of symmetry. Something achiral has planes of symmetry or points of symmetry or centers of inversion, right? So yeah, that's a clue. Look at that, plane of symmetry. Can't be chiral. Yet there's a stereo center right there and right there, therefore meso. Do you see a plane of symmetry here? Nope, If you, you can't put a plane of symmetry there because these are different planes. Let's true the mirror, mirror plane test. Uh, let's see. I did the opposite, I didn't draw the mirror plane. Uh, let's go back. Pardon me. And right there. Okay. So if I try to pick that up and put it on there, we see it does not superimpose. I could rotate it, flip it. It's not going to superimpose. So these are truly different. Those are enantiomers. Those are indeed chiral. Because we suspected chirality was in the works. There's chiral centers. We proved it wasn't meso because they overlap. They don't superimpose, excuse me. So they're not superimposable mirror images. So therefore chiral. Okay, so however, this one is achiral because it is meso. Not all meso, not all achiral things are meso. Sometimes they're just achiral because they don't even have stereo centers. Meso is a special type of achiral thing because it's sneaky. It has stereo centers, which says, okay, I suspect it's chiral. I have good reason to believe it because most things with stereo centers are chiral. Yet this has a certain level of symmetry because why is it sneaky? The stereo center matches exactly with the level of symmetry on the other side that creates a plane of symmetry that breaks up any lack of symmetry to begin with. So now it is back to being achiral. So it's too symmetric to be chiral, it's meso now. So when you see a plane of symmetry, even if there's a stereo center, it's achiral, but it gets a special word or descriptor added to it. 
If it's achiral and it has stereo centers, it's meso. Okay. But if it's just plain old achiral because it's a carbon with only two different groups, it's not meso. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have a stereo center. All right. So some extra good practice will be to do this one. You do dimethylcyclohexane this time. Use the above one as sort of an example to help you through some of the harder parts. And check your answer with me. Do that immediately so this doesn't chase you down later and haunt you. All right? All right have fun and beware of the meso.